Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona, and in this video, I'm doing a detailed review of the new Resound Nexia Hearing Aids. Coming up. Almost exactly one year since the release of the Resound Omnia hearing aids, Resound has now released their new Nexia platform. Honestly, releasing a new hearing aid only one year after their previous generation technology is a little bit out of the ordinary, considering that new hearing aid platforms usually come out every 18 to 24 months. But I've got to say, the new improvements that Resound has made in their new Nexia hearing aids has definitely justified an accelerated release of this new platform. In fact, there is one particular particular feature of these hearing aids that has me more excited than pretty much any other feature out there. And I will cover that feature here in a minute. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor and click that like button, it really lets me know that you want me to make more detailed videos just like this one. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well so you get notified every single time I publish a new video. Let's go ahead and start with some of the basics First, Resound actually has three different form factors of the Resound Nexia hearing aids. They have the rechargeable micro re, which stands for receiver in ear, the classic re 61, which is their size 312 disposable battery model, and the classic re 62, which is their size 13 disposable battery model. Some exciting news with individuals with single sided deafness, this new Resound Nexia platform also has a new cross transmitter, which is the first time that Resound has ever actually had a cross transmitter, and this transmitter will be capable of performing cross and by cross functions. This new cross transmitter is rechargeable, in fact it looks exactly like the micro re. However, even though it is rechargeable, it is still compatible with the disposable battery models of this particular hearing aid. Let's take a minute to look at the new rechargeable micro re. I've been wearing this hearing aid for the past two weeks doing this review, and I've got to say that this is probably the smallest rechargeable battery hearing aid that I have ever used. In fact, this is even smaller than the previous generation Omnia rechargeable micro re hearing aid, which was really small in and of itself. Considering that I now wear eyeglasses while wearing these hearing aids, it is greatly appreciated that this hearing aid is so extremely small. It allows me to have a lot more freed up real estate behind my ears to use my glasses, and wearing glasses with these particular hearing aids is not an issue. Let me go ahead and spin around and show you what this actually looks like behind my ear. As you can see, it is very small and there is plenty of space behind my ear to have both the hearing aid and my eyeglasses. Now when I spoke with Resound, I asked them if they actually made the battery size smaller and they did not. It's the same battery that they had in the Resound Omnia line of devices. Now the reason why that's important is that they were able to actually conserve space in other ways. They actually developed a higher tech plastic to create the housing of this particular hearing aid. And on top of that, they were able to take smaller MEMS microphones and put them inside of these devices, and they sealed them in a different way as well. All of that saved a lot of space inside of this hearing aid. And on top of that, they were actually able to reconfigure the structure and how they placed everything inside of these hearing aids as well, including the accelerometer. All of this miniaturization has basically made this hearing aid the smallest hearing aid on the planet that is still rechargeable and goes behind your ears. All right, let me go ahead and hold this up to the camera a little bit closer so you can see what this guy looks like. You can see how incredibly small that particular hearing aid is. It's really impressive what Resound has been able to do with all of the tech crammed inside of this small little device. You still have the option of a premium charger like this one that you see here or a standard charger or a desktop charger. The premium charger that I've got actually has a battery bank inside of it so it will store some extra charges for you and you can actually see with the LED lights on there how much battery life you have left inside of your hearing aids. The other thing that's nice about this, of course, because it has the battery bank is you don't have to have it plugged in. You can take it with you on the go and you'll have several additional days of charging stored inside of it. Now, when you are charging these devices, it can take up to three hours to give you maximum battery life with the lithium ion batteries that they have inside of them. Once you have these hearing aids fully charged, they will give you up to 30 hours of battery life if you do not do any type of streaming from your phone 
or your tablet or your TV. However, if you did happen to stream all day long, you would still get 24 hours of battery life, which is amazing for a hearing aid that's this small. Something else that I like about the actual chargers themselves is that this well that is down inside of the charger is big enough to have custom ear molds inside of it, which is not something that you can say for every other manufacturer out there. The only thing that might be a little tricky for some people is actually pulling the hearing aids out. Now, if you get the right angle, it's not an issue, but if you get the wrong angle, the lining inside of here is actually made up of like a rubbery material, so it can get stuck a little bit. So if you have poor finger dexterity, actually pulling the hearing aids out might be an issue, but I don't think it's gonna be a very big issue. Of course, one of the big questions I'm gonna get from a cross hearing aid user is, how many hours of battery life am I going to get on this rechargeable battery device? And to my amazement, you're actually going to be getting up to 16 hours of battery life if you're using the cross transmitter, which is pretty much enough battery life for anyone who's going to wear hearing aids throughout the course of a normal day. As far as what the hearing aids actually look like, I really like the look of the rechargeable micro re hearing aid. I am not a very big fan of the disposable battery models. I love that they have the disposable battery option because not a lot of manufacturers even give you the option of disposable battery hearing aids nowadays. I just happen to think the disposable battery models look a little goofy. Now the disposable battery versions of this hearing aid do not have the onboard accelerometer, so there's no tap control functionality with the disposable battery models. However, the classic RE62s that use the size 13 disposable battery, those have an onboard telecoil. So if you want to gain direct access to a hearing loop system inside of a public venue, you need the 62s to do it. However, you can still gain access to a hearing loop using the rechargeable version and the size 312 disposable battery version if you use the multi-mic that has the telecoil inside of that that will still be compatible with these hearing aids. Now I've got to say, no matter which version of this hearing aid you have, they are capable of fitting a wide range of hearing losses, anywhere from a mild level hearing loss up to a profound level of hearing loss, depending on the type of receiver that you use on this hearing aid. Of course, if you have a moderately severe or worse hearing loss, you should probably be using a custom ear mold on these hearing aids. And the good news is, is that Resound actually accepts 3D ear scans so they can actually make your ear molds faster and they can make them more accurately. All of these models are also compatible with the Marie receivers which stands for microphone and receiver in ear and these are really amazing receivers but you have to have the appropriate type of hearing loss to be able to utilize it and the reason why these are really nice receivers is because it basically places a microphone inside of your ear canal so you get to use your natural pinna effect and I do have videos discussing the pinna effect as well. As far as colors go you get the pretty typical eight flesh tone and hair color options without any fun colors, which is kind of a bummer. When it comes to technology levels, you have to remember that the Resound Nexia is basically the flagship model from Resound, which means that you're going to get the tech level of nine, seven, and five. Nine is their premium, seven is their mid tier, and five is their bottom tier. When it comes to selecting which technology level is most appropriate for you, basically how I explain explain it is each time you go down in technology level, it takes features and customizations away from your hearing care professional when they're trying to optimize the performance of those devices for you. However, it does not guarantee that if you drop from a level 9 to a level 7 or a level 7 to a level 5 that you will lose performance. It just means that there's the potential of you leaving benefit on the table. So my recommendation is the same for everyone. You should be going with the highest level of technology that you can reasonably afford and if you cannot afford afford it, you should be dropping down to a tech level that you can afford, and then it is the job of your hearing care professional to maximize the performance of that technology. Now I should say that when it comes to the Nexia technology levels, the premium level 9 technology is the only one with the front focus feature. If you drop down from the 9 to the 7 or into the 5s, you're actually losing that feature and instead you have to use the ultra focus feature. The reason why this is important is that the front focus feature gets 
translate to an additional four decibels of signal to noise ratio improvement when you're in a background noise situation. And yes, this is above what you get in that ultra focused feature that is inside of the level sevens and the level fives. And in case you're new to signal to noise ratio improvements, anytime that you have a one decibel improvement in signal to noise ratio, that is roughly equivalent of a 10% improvement in a background noise situation. So if you have a four decibel improvement there, that is approximately 40% improvement in speech understanding and background noise. Now I know that Rosal will say till they're blue in the face that this four decibel improvement will give you 150% improvement in background noise. I just don't know how they're coming up with that number. They basically said the same thing in the Resound Omnia platform, but I do not believe that signal to noise ratio improvements work that way. Now keep in mind, if you want to actually get this additional benefit with the Resound Nexia hearing aids in this level nine technology, it has a heck of a lot to do with how you couple that hearing aid to your ear with a dome or with a custom ear mold, because the way that they achieve this is with directionality, and directionality only works really well when you can block off or occlude your ear canal more. Now I know that you want to know what the cost of these hearing aids are and just like I say in all of my other hearing aid review videos, it really depends on where you live, what technology level you're getting, what services are included in your hearing aid purchase, and what the quality of those services are. So the price that you pay could vary by thousands of dollars per hearing aid depending on each one of these variables. Basically what I'm telling you here is there's no way for me to give you even a rough estimate of what these hearing aids will cost you. As far as programmability goes, I have to say that when it comes to Resound hearing aids, I just wish that I had more adjustment capabilities of these particular hearing aids. I never feel like I can match hearing loss prescriptive targets exactly like I can with several other brands that are out there. Now, if this is the first time that you're hearing me talk about real ear measurement, I will link this video down in the description so you can learn more about it. Now, real ear measurement is extremely important, especially since Resound created a new hearing aid user onboarding patient profile, which actually reduces the amount of high frequency that you will get to make the hearing aids sound more comfortable but it might actually take away speech intelligibility, which at the end of the day is not really a good thing. Really, even from day one, you should be striving to hit your full prescription that is verified with real ear measurement if you wanna hear your best with these devices. I was able to obtain some objective data on these hearing aids from HearAdvisor, which is an independent hearing aid testing lab to compare the initial first fit settings of these hearing aids with the tuned fit that has been customized using real ear measurement, and here's what they found. No surprise, just like the previous generation Resound Omnia, when the new Resound Nexia hearing aids were programmed using real ear measurement, they performed better than when they were only first fit based on a patient's audiogram. So if you want to hear your best with the Resound Nexia devices, you had better make sure that your provider performs real ear measurement when they're custom programming your hearing aids. Keep in mind though that real ear measurement is only one aspect to ensure that you receive a lot of benefit with these hearing aids. You really need to make sure that you have a hearing care professional who is going to be following comprehensive audiologic best practices when selecting, fitting, and programming these hearing aids for you. Of course, if you don't know what these best practices are, I do have a video discussing those as well, and you really should be watching that video when you're done watching this one. If you're looking for an easy way to find one of these rare hearing care professionals who actually follows comprehensive best practices, then make sure that you check out my website, hearingup.com, to find up a Hearing Up network member near you. Hearing Up members have been vetted and are committed to providing comprehensive audiologic best practices to help you hear your absolute best. Once you find your closest provider, just give them a call and tell them Dr. Cliff sent you. All right, back to the review. Now, remember when I was telling you that there's one particular feature inside of these hearing aids that I was more excited about than any other feature? Is that they are the first AuraCast compatible hearing aids on the market. Not only will this form of Bluetooth be more stable and have better audio quality, but it will also reduce the battery drain on your hearing aids, and it will have something called broadcast audio, which will allow you to share an audio signal with other people or have other people share their audio signal with you. Now, AuraCast is so amazing that I've actually made a video about AuraCast that I will also, of course, link in the description for you. Currently, though, this AuraCast is not yet 
active. So you're going to have to use the made for iPhone Bluetooth Low Energy as well as the Asha Bluetooth protocol for Android devices. Now for those of you who watch my channel regularly, you know that I like to use an Android phone primarily and in my case I use a Samsung Galaxy S23. Now when I was trying to use this phone with these hearing aids, it did not go very well. I was able to get them paired up with the app, but when I was doing streaming of phone calls, it only went into one ear, and I was not able to do any other streaming after that, and it just went really rough. Now, to be fair, Resound told me that they were not yet very well compatible with the Galaxy S23s or with the Google Pixel phones. But don't worry, if you're an Android user, they are expecting to have updates come out over the course of the next several weeks to several months that will fix a lot of these issues hopefully. As of right now, the Resound Nexia hearing aids work much better with my iPhone. And yes, it does allow you to have the ability to do tap control to answer an incoming phone call, and these hearing aids will even pick up your voice and send it to the person on the other end of the line if you have a compatible iPhone. Now, quick little segue here back to the Galaxy phone that I was using. I was actually able to get two-way audio to work on that one hearing aid that was working in my left ear, but of course, I was only able to get that to work one time. I don't know how that was possible to get two-way audio to work on my Samsung Galaxy S23 because it's not supposed to. Now, I know there's some of you out there who are pretty excited because, hey, new platform of hearing aids, new hearing aid app, right? Wrong. They're still using the Smart 3D app. Now, in their defense, the Smart 3D app is the highest rated hearing aid app out there right now, so there's really not a whole lot of reasons to change it entirely. They have added new additional features to the app, which includes the Check My Fit feature, which will actually tell you if your hearing aids are inside of your ears correctly, and the Resound Assist that allows you to have a remote care session with your hearing care professional from the comfort of your own home. Of course, a few things that you can actually do with the app is you can switch between the different programs that you have have inside of here. You can also access the different accessories as well. You also have access to a couple of different filters, including a noise filter and a speech clarity filter. Of course, you can increase or decrease the volume of the hearing aids in one or both ears at the same time. And you do have the sound enhancer, which will allow you to use a three-band equalizer to adjust your audio settings. And this also works for streaming as well, which is actually a really nice feature to have as well. And you can adjust the features like noise reduction and wind noise reduction as well. Another thing that's really cool about this app is that it is compatible with an Apple Watch, so you can make adjustments on your watch that will affect your hearing aids. You just have to make sure that you also have your phone on you. Now, like I said, I will not cover this app in detail. I actually covered it several years ago, and if you want me to make a new updated review of this particular app, go ahead Ahead and leave me a comment down in the comment section. Resound has also released their new TV Streamer Plus, which basically replaces their TV Streamer 2, and this TV Streamer Plus is compatible with AuraCast. So not only are you going to be able to stream audio into your hearing aids, but you could technically also share that audio signal with somebody else who has AuraCast compatible Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth earbuds. And if you ask me, that is pretty freaking cool. Of course, if you are using that TV Streamer Plus, you can also adjust that audio quality and control how it works through that Smart 3D app as well. As far as the other accessories go, the Resound Nexia is still compatible with basically all of them from Resound. This includes the previous generation TV Streamer 2, the Multi-Mic, the Micro Mic, the Phone Clip Plus, the Remote Control, and the Remote Control 2. A few other things to note is that the Nexia hearing aids are bimodal compatible with the Cochlear America's Nucleus sound processors. So if you happen to be a Cochlear implant user and you're using Cochlear Americas, you can go ahead and go out and get yourself a pair of Resound Nexia, not a pair, you want to get one Resound Nexia hearing aid because it's going to be bimodal. You put that in your ear that is not implanted with the cochlear implants, and those devices will actually share information, and you can stream into both of your ears as well. One thing that's really good to know is that the Resound Nexia hearing aids are also IP68 rated, which means that they are highly resistant to debris 
and moisture. So if you're worried about your hearing aids failing on you, you always wanna make sure that you go with an IP68 rated hearing aid because that will reduce the likelihood that you actually damage your hearing aids with debris and moisture. All right, overall, the Resound Nexia hearing aids are very impressive hearing aids, and I can see why Resound did not wanna to wait to release these devices, and they came out with them only a year after they released the Omnia platform. So if you're looking for a very small rechargeable receiver in canal hearing aid, or one of those increasingly rare disposable battery hearing aids, or a hearing aid that does really well in background noise, or a hearing aid that is leading the way when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, you may want to ask your hearing care professional about the Resound Nexia.